Welcome back to the Old Shed Workshop. I'm Mike. If this is your first time here, I'll invite you to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. I've grown my channel to a point where I have thousands of viewers a month, but less than 10% of my viewers are subscribers. It would really help me to grow my channel. Today I want to share with you a new project. I'm taking the remaining portion of the beautiful piece of olive wood left over from the resin table cribbage board and I'm going to make another cribbage board but this time I'm going to use inlays. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. Here's the remaining piece of olive wood from the last project where I made a river table three-person cribbage board out of the rest of this piece. You can get a good look at the, the grain this beautiful wood. I'm about to put these inlays in. The manufacturer refers to these as sedge bells. A little different from a typical bow tie. I'll show you the templates that I'm going to use to do this. I've already outlined where I want these to be so that when I set up the templates I'm pretty close to the orientation that I've already designed. This is the system that I'm going to use. This is made by a company called Slab Stitcher. As a disclaimer, I have no affiliation with Slab Stitcher. I just like their products. This is their main guide template that comes in the starter kit. And then you buy different smaller templates for whatever inlay you're going to use. It's a simple modular system and it works very well. I used it before to make a table out of an old slab of pine that was sitting around out in the shop. I'll put a few pictures up above so you can see that. Following the manufacturer's instructions, you put the base plate down first so that you can read their logo and then take your desired insert, set it into the opening so that it's upside down and it'll snap into the base. Now I'll clamp it in place. Having clamped the workpiece, now I'm setting up my router. I take the base plate and the bushing and the centering bit that comes in the starter kit, and I've set it up in my router. You want to put the base plate on loosely so that as you advance your router base onto your router, it'll center itself on the centering pin. Once it's centered on the centering pin, then you can tighten the base in place. Now I have to remove it, take the centering bit out, and put my router bit in. I've set my router bit depth according to the manufacturer instructions. I've drilled a pilot hole according to instructions, and I'm ready to route out the first inlay. Always make sure to wait until the router has stopped completely before removing it so you don't damage either your workpiece or your template. I finished routing out for the first inlay. Make sure you take a measurement and you know how deep your inlay cut is. Once you put your inlay into the cut, you're not going to get it back out again. You're going to just put some glue on it. Tap it in with a mallet so that it's just flush or slightly above your main workpiece because you're going to sand. You don't want to set it too deep. Let me cut the other two. I have the cutouts routed out for the inlays. In this particular application, I had two choices. One was walnut and one was cherry. And I like the cherry better with the olive wood than the walnut. I'm ready to glue them and set them into place. This is Type Bond 2. It's well I use, unless I'm gluing something that's going to be around water, like a cutting board or beer flights. Then I use Type Bond Ultimate 3. We'll get some on here. This is my best applicator.
once you get some glue on, you want to tap this in carefully. You don't want to go too deep. Nice and easy. You want to try to be as close to flush as you can. You don't want to set it too deep. You are going to sand, but you don't want to have to sand to the extent that you've put your inlays too deep. So here's the next one. Manufacturer puts the name of the particular inlay on each one, so you can't make a mistake. Some of them are pretty close. Get them glued up good. A nice snug fit. You don't ever have to worry about them popping out. That's it. You just tap them in nice and easy. Don't worry about the glue because you're going to sand. Nice and flat. That's what you want. Try to get it as nice and flat as you can. Okay, one more. And this part of the job will be done. You just tap it in. Okay, that's it for this part of the process. I've squared up the three sides that don't have the live edge on the table saw so that I could lay out my templates in the proper orientation. I'm using this template system from Rockla, the two-person track cribbage templates. I've used these before. I'll put a link up above. You can see the cribbage boards that I've made. At this point, I've drilled the first series of holes and I'm ready to advance the template to the next position. According to the directions, once you have the pins in the indexing holes, the template shouldn't move. I like to put a clamp on it as well. It's a simple process. You have these series of five holes across. You line up the last hole in the series of five, put the peg in. Then you make new pilot holes in the indexing hole spots, and then you move your indexing pegs to the indexing holes, and you continue to drill your holes, and you keep leapfrogging till you get to the end of the series of holes. The Rockler system is a real nice system. I'll share with you that the uh, drill bit that comes with the kit I've exchanged out for a 1 8 inch uh, brad point bit that I bought online and I had to cut the length of the bit a little bit to fit in this adapter that comes with the uh, the Rockler kit. There's an Allen set screw here. Uh, word to the wise, take a photo of this before you loosen up that Allen key set screw to get your drill bit out. Otherwise you might find all these pieces and parts all over your workbench. The uh, brad point bit I think does a better job uh, than the bit that comes with the kit. I've taken the clamp off just to move the template up to the next position. I just wanted to give you a little tidbit while I thought of it. As you have the template in place and you're drilling a series of holes, take a cribbage peg and check your holes. Make sure you have the proper depth that you need and make sure your holes are straight. That way you don't have to come back later on 
and try to put the template in the exact position to finish up your holes. It's easier to do it now than to try to do it later. Okay, let's move the template up. This is the last stage of moving the templates. At this stage, I'm finished with this particular template. Pull the guide pins out, take this out of the way. Now you have to switch templates. This is the last series of holes. Same thing. You put the guide pins in. I'll put my clamp on. And start drilling the last series of holes. I'm going to take off the last template. This is the end of the drilling portion. The holes came out really nice in this olive wood. Now it's time for sanding. In order to fill up some of the residual crack, just to give it a nicer finished look, I'm using black CA glue. Get down into the cracks. As I put it on, hit it with a little activator. And this sands out very well. This will look like a beautiful black line. And it fills in the crack nicely. I have my jig set up on my workpiece now. And I have a pilot hole already drilled. I have my router bit set up in my guide bushing on my router and I'm going to cut out where the deck of cards is going to be inset into the workpiece. Having cut this outside edge with my jig and a guide bushing and my router, I finished the outside edge and then went to my drill press with a Forstner bit to hog out the rest of the material to get to the depth I wanted the deck of cards to be seated at. I've also bored the hole where I'm going to seat a tin to hold the pegs. The filling of the crack with the black CA glue is also completed. Now I'm going over to my router table just to relieve this sharp edge all the way around the three sides that don't have the live edge. I have my router bit set to the depth I want and I'm ready to start cutting the 45 degree chamfer. This is the last part of finishing up this board. I have my first piece of felt cut and now I'm just fitting it into the space. This is where the deck of cards will go. And then I'll do another small piece for over here where the pegs will go. That will finish up this cribbage board. Beautiful. Oh, nice. All right. So I'll get the circle cut to win here. This is where the, uh, tin is going to go with the pegs. Okay, that's in. Let me cut the circle. This is the last of the project. The little circle is all cut and fit. Just tap it in, finish it off nicely. And then this is where the pegs will go. And this is where you put your deck of cards. And there's your finished cribbage board. Thanks for staying with me through the whole project. I hope you like it. I hope it gives you some ideas to make your own. Please don't forget the links below if you see anything that uh, might be helpful in your future projects. See you on the next one.